Oh gee, isn't this great. It makes me want to just go outside and take a walk in real nature. Maybe I'll do that. Deep within the darkest forest lies a mushroom. The rarest of its kind, its roots reach down to the center of the dark core of our planet. When consumed, this mushroom transforms even the cutest of creatures into nasty, abominable monsters. Hey guys, Hattie the Creator here, creating something new to share with you. And yes, as the intro suggests and the title of this video, I'm going to monsterize Bob Ross. Bob Ross just wandered into the woods and couldn't help but taste the mushroom. I might be committing a carnal sin against the artistic community here on YouTube, but just so you know, I have mad respect for Bob Ross. He is an icon and a legend. And a couple of you guys have been asking me to take my hat off and do some sort of hair reveal. I wasn't gonna do it, but since you guys have been persistent, I'll go ahead and show you what I look like without my hat on. All right, you ready? You asked for it. There you go. My real name is Hattie Ross. I'm a cousin of the Ross family. These awesome locks of hair just grow naturally. So that's why I'm always wearing a hat. This is what I have to deal with. Now let me just fix that. Takes a while to get it all back in there. You have no idea how long it takes me to get ready in the morning. There we go. There, now it's all tucked back in and I am ready to start drawing. I can't draw with that hair hanging out all over my face. So let's see if I could pull this off. So now here we are in the all too familiar Photoshop environment and I am gonna start off by sketching a cute version of Bob Ross. I guess kinda cute. He's gonna be a little cuter version, a little caricature of, of himself. And I have a photo of him in here just for reference. His happy smiling face is just putting me in a good mood already. I've heard of a lot of people just putting him on TV even though they aren't painting and aren't even interested in painting just because he's so soothing and calm and happy. He's just such a funny, nice guy. So as I'm drawing him up here, I want him to be scared, kind of reacting to the abomination version of himself and he's holding up his paintbrush, kind of blocking his face, lifting up his leg as if to block himself even further, I guess. I guess that's a reaction you get when somebody's like trying to kick you or something, you just naturally lift up your leg to block it, maybe? I think this is working pretty good, I'm, I'm working out some kinks as go fixing some anatomy shortening his arms shrinking his body down I didn't like the proportions but once I am happy with this I am ready to start drawing or sketching out abominations for this character good old Bob Ross -a nation that doesn't sound good Ross monster Rossdilla Ross Rostra Bobthra what would be a good name for a monster Bob Ross mega Ross <laughs> that doesn't even sound scary it's mega Ross just sounds like a big whiny baby I'm thinking Ross from Friends. Well, I finally ironed out the sketch and now I am doing the final line art on him, polishing it up, making it look nice and clean, cause clean is important. I like them clean lines. And then I am ready to start on the abomination. I have no idea what it's gonna look like. I've done zero sketches on paper. It's just gonna be completely off the top of my head and we'll see how it goes. I like how he has his color palette still. Maybe he should have been using it as a shield. Looks like he was intending to do some nice nature scenes out in nature, paint what he was looking at. But his curiosity just got the better of him, I guess. Can't help but taste in rogue mushrooms out in the woods, am I right? I mean, we all do that, don't we? I mean, right? It's normal, right? It's probably a miracle I'm still alive. I think I heard that a couple of mushrooms will kill you. I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe that's just an urban legend to trick kids into not trying random vegetation, which is probably not a good idea all around. It would suck if you ate some poison ivy or something. If it itches on the outside, it's gotta itch on the inside too. Is that even possible? I don't know. The things I think about as I draw. So I've got a rough sketch and I'm thinking of just something really lanky and just goofy looking. I was thinking that I was gonna make his neck a tree at first, but then it just kind of ends up being some fleshy organic snake-like neck. I have some tree branches coming out of his hair. I thought that would be enough nod to the happy little trees comment he makes all the time. They're still is a little bit of tree in there. I want him to have a big creepy grin that's like overly happy. Like he's happy but what if that was pushed even further to where he's like insanely happy. Like freaky clown happy. So that's what I was going for with that and I think he's looking pretty good. His body is very awkward and lanky which is what I was going for. I want him to have really disgusting finger and toenails of course. 
Got some veins popping out here and there. His pupils are just tiny little dots. I think that just gives an insane look to him. Usually, I mean, at least I try to have this rule with myself where I do at least three sketches before I move forward with any of them. But I just like this one, and so I just couldn't help myself but keep going forward on it. Now, I'm using a lot smaller brush than I normally do just because I want to go kind of ultra detailed on him. I just think it'll look really cool that way. The reason why I don't do that all the time is just because it takes a lot longer. So this drawing took me probably longer than any other of the Abomination type version drawings that I've done in any of the other videos. Which is totally fine because Bob Ross deserves it. See, I, I mean, this might look like I'm making fun at him or throwing a jab at him or something, but no, I'm, I'm paying respect to the guy. I'm doing justice on his abomination. This is going to be something that he looks down from the clouds, those happy little clouds up in the sky, and he thinks, that's a cool drawing. And he's going to say, Patty, I like that. Maybe, maybe, or maybe he would use some other choice words, but I'm sure he is pleased with this abomination of himself. It doesn't have a ton of likeness to him, other than the afro. I did try to get some elements in there of him. I think the littler one looks more like him than the bigger one. But that's fine, it's totally Bob Ross. People know it's Bob Ross. If he has a paintbrush and he's wearing a blue shirt with some buttons undone and he's got an afro, it's Bob Ross. Ain't nobody taking that away from him. Finished up his head and realized I didn't put that paintbrush broken in his mouth that I sketched out. And I'm going to change it a little bit. So I'm, I'm making it so it looks like he just bit the end off of his paintbrush and the part with the brushes in his hand instead of in his mouth. thought that would make more sense because if he just bit it off from in his hand, the brush wouldn't be outside his mouth. It would be inside his mouth. And then it wouldn't be obvious it was a brush. Looked like he's chewing on a tree or something, which wouldn't make a lick of sense. Maybe what would have made more sense is if it was the mushroom. But it's all good. I just added it in on another layer and I'm still going. Going strong on this line art. My hand cramped up a few times so I took a couple breaks here and there and came back to it. Maybe I played a video game here and there. I like video games a lot but I have to be careful because if I get sucked into one then it's really hard to pull myself away and to draw. But what I found works great for me is to kind of use them as a reward system so if I'm being productive then I will let myself play for a little bit and I try not to play a game that has like a story or something that just kind of draws you in and ropes you around the neck. I mean when I played Skyrim I was like a hermit that's all I was thinking about that's all I wanted to do pulling all-nighters just running around killing dragons for but I know I wasn't alone I bet half the people watching this are guilty of the same thing can't judge me too harshly for that but yeah you can easily get sucked into that escapism of a video game and just get pulled away from reality and your productivity is just shot so be careful it's a slippery slope there but anyways, getting off that tangent, I am really enjoying this drawing. It's coming along really cool, I think. I love all the detail work, and it's looking pretty rad. This finger here looks like a witch finger. You know those witch fingers you get around Halloween? You put your fingers in, and you got that witch finger shell on top of it. It's like a replica of this finger right here. I like these long old goofy looking fingernails and he's looking pretty gross and disgusting. I'd be pretty freaked out if anybody started crawling at me in the crab walk and I'd be even more freaked out if they look like this. Even just the expression. Subtract the giant long unrealistic neck. <laughs> I, I watched a movie once called The Great Yokai War and there was this crazy scene where this yokai, which is basically like a Japanese style ghost or demon or something. I I'm probably butchering this. It's probably Probably way off but I watched it when I was maybe 20 years old I don't know I don't really remember but there was just one lady in that movie that had a really long neck and maybe that's where the inspiration for this came from I have no idea but I remember it kind of was pretty spooky Just his head floating around with this giant neck going out the door and chasing the kid around trying to bite him or something. If I'm even remembering the movie right, maybe it was just a bad dream. I don't remember the movie well enough to say if it was good or bad. I can't really recommend it, but I remember it had some pretty cool creatures and stuff in there. I typically base if I like a movie or not based on the character design and the characters and monsters and the special effects and stuff. And I end up liking a lot of movies that people hate because the story sucks or whatever. And I recommend them based on those merits 
audience and people were like, yo, that movie was garbage. But special effects wise, I remember this was a pretty cool and fun movie to watch. Just finishing up the line art on this guy and I am pleased with how it looks and I am ready to jump in and do some colors. But for the colors, I don't want to just do the normal whatever colors and just pull colors out of the picture of Bob Ross here. So I went over to Adobe Cooler, which is kind of my staple, my go-to for any sort of color palette needs. Another feature that they have is you can take a drawing or some painting that you really like the colors of based on the mood or anything like that. Just something that kind of calls out to you and then you can upload it into there and it, and it pulls out some of the main colors you can use and kind of develop your palette from. And that's actually what I ended up doing with this one. I took a painting that I like the colors of. I drew this at a very high resolution with the pencil tool and I do this because you can fill in colors really easily and just block them in without having to expand your selection or your fill. You don't always get as crisp of lines as you would with your brush because it has the aliasing and stuff on there. But if you try to fill in an area that you drew up with the paintbrush tool, you'll get some artifacts and some white fuzzies and stuff in there. You won't get a clean color fill. So that's the only reason I draw with the pencil tool. And if you draw at big enough resolution, it really doesn't make much of a difference. You can't really tell, especially if you save the image much smaller than it is. This picture is probably 50% bigger than I'll ever print it. Even if it's printed on a poster, it's probably big enough. If your computer can handle it, you might as well use it and make it big and then you have it for anything you need it for. It's always easier to go smaller than to go bigger. Going bigger doesn't really work. You lose all that quality. It makes a chunky looking gross picture. Just blocking in the areas, filling in spaces I need to, and it's looking cool. I like the color choices so far, and I'm gonna adjust the shirt and add a blue into here because I think the iconic blue shirt is kind of a staple for Bob Ross. Even though he has purple hair, he needs that blue shirt. I also realized I forgot to color in the smaller version of himself, so I need to color that in. So I'm actually gonna stop here and then I'm gonna reveal the final. Hey guys, thanks so much for hanging out and watching this video. Give me a thumbs up if you think I did the Bob Ross abomination justice. Remember, you two are a creator. We are all creators. Let's keep on creating. Stay motivated, challenge yourself, and I challenge you to do something creative today. Even if it's just a doodle on a napkin at lunchtime. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video and you haven't already. And if you have, I love you. Thank you for sticking around. And I will catch you on the next video. Thanks guys.